Hi, it's Gwen Fox, and thanks for being here. Today, we're delving into the fun stuff about design. That's the elements. As you know, I consider the principles of design to be the foundational part of a painting and the elements to be the fun part, or the fluff as I refer to it. Now, the elements are the fun things because they're used to decorate the paintings in a way that says your painting is yours and not anybody else's. And the elements of a painting are shape, texture, form, space, line, value, and color. Now, what we do is use the principles of design to develop a painting that's sound, and then we take the elements of design and we make the painting exciting. So let's break down each one so you totally understand how each one works. Shape. Shape can be organic or geometric. Organic shapes are more free form, they're softer, they're seen in nature. Geometric lines are square, have more edge to them. Now, Picasso's painting, The Three Musicians, has, that has interlocking shapes that look like a puzzle. And I gotta tell you, interlocking shapes are so important in a painting. Now make sure, though, that you have large shapes, and they're usually toward the outer part of the painting, middle shapes, and then little shapes. Often, you will hear this, it's often referred to as mama, papa, and baby bear. Now, knowing how to see shapes is important rather than seeing objects. Because at the beginning of my, when I was first learning how to paint, I would look at a landscape and I would see the mountain and the meadow and the, and the buildings. And now I see shapes and not objects. So next is texture. This refers to the surface quality. There is real texture and implied texture, and both are important. Real texture is what you decide to put on the painting to give it texture, and implied texture is just that. It's implied. Example would be the painting of the old king. When doing texture, it's good to have smooth areas as well as textured areas to keep the painting interesting. The face, the neck, and the hands are smooth but there's texture everywhere else. Form, this is the mass or three-dimensional objects. This is usually in sculpture, but with two-dimensional art, it shows we show roundness by giving values. Let's look at the rocks on the seashore. Here's, when you paint them, you will show their form so they look like rocks and not like blobs. Now, it is your value change that gives form its roundness. It goes from light to dark. Next is space. This allows the painting to appear three-dimensional with a feeling of actual depth. This could be done several ways. In, in painting, which is two-dimensional, the feeling of space is an illusion. Example of space would be in Robert Henri's painting of a snow scene in the city. There's a deep sense of space as you go back into the painting. The painting, you feel a space when you look down the street. Another example would be Andrew Wyeth's of Christina. The space is super apparent and is beautifully created. Size, be it people or objects, are large when they're closer to the viewer and smaller as they go away. Now, line. Line is made with a pointed tool. It can be a stick, it can be a brush, it can be a pencil, it can be anything that makes a line that you want. I love using sticks, I love it. Line says different things depending on application. You can express excitement or calm depending on the angle or which way you wanna use it. I love line as it says so much without much effort. Each person though, has their own special way of applying line. And this adds to the painting saying, this is your painting. Example would be Jan Griggs' flower painting. The lines are curved and whimsical. This is her type of line that says Jan Griggs. Another sensual line is in this painting by Jenna Hyden. Her line is firmer, but it's gentle and sensual. 
A line can also be added when the painting is done, such as this line done with an oil stick. Now there are five main types of lines in art. Vertical, horizontal, diagonal, zigzag, and curved. There are variations of these, but they're all based on these five line, types of lines. Next is value. Now, value refers to the dark and light of a color, and I think it's probably one of the hardest things for an artist to learn when starting out. Now, if you don't have a grayscale, I suggest that it would be a really good idea to get one because this helps you in looking at the value of your painting. Usually we tend to go just toward the middle value when the painting, in the painting, but because we fear putting dark, we really, we're scared of it. And that's what the painting usually needs. It's your value change that gives form its roundness, and it goes from light to dark. And in this painting tea time, there's strong value changes, but it's the value change that gives the body form. Now we come to the element we joy and joy the most. When you go to the art store, I bet you stand in front of the art counter, a uh, counter that's got all the tubes of paint, and you lust over those luscious colors. Color is the most exciting of the elements, but so often overused and misunderstood. There's a tendency to put as many bright colors as you can in a painting, because you want to use all of those gorgeous colors, but what really happens is that there's just too much brightness. It's like when you go to the symphony and they're warming up. It's an array of sound, but you don't hear any instrument, any one instrument. But when they start playing, you hear the instrument that you're supposed to hear for that music. It's the same with painting. Colors are there to support and not compete. But also remember, a color is not a color until you place it next to another color because it changes that color. So it's important to understand this concept. Like if you want yellow to stand out, then put a gray violet next to it. Why? Because it's opposite of the color wheel. But you want to gray it down so it won't be garish. Also, if you place two colors that are opposite the color wheel, make sure that you have more of one color than the other. Because if they're equal amount, they'll cancel each other out. Now let's say, let's say this is uh, an orange right here, and you have an equal amount of blue side by side, they're going to cancel each other out. But if you have an orange with a small amount of blue, it causes excitement. The problem with color is that we want to use a lot of color in our painting, and the painting doesn't hold together. And remember that the fewer the colors you use makes it easy to have unity with your painting. With fewer colors, you have more control. Therefore, your paintings will hold together. Now, the one thing artists tend to forget is the importance of neutral colors. It's the neutral colors that will make pure colors sing. Neutral colors are made with the colors that you're already using in your painting. You just tone them down so that they're not a particular color. They are a neutral color. Now, I know this has been a lot, but I hope it's helped you understand the elements of design. As I have said before, it's so important to understand the principles and elements because it gives you freedom to create paintings that are exciting and solid. Now, if you haven't, be sure and subscribe. And remember, next week will be the last video of this series. It will be a great video as it's going to cover how to use the principles and the elements together to their best advantage. Let me know if you've got any questions, and I will see you next week. I love you. Take care. Bye.